um, Scotty wants to start on time. So we're going to get started. Hello, guys, and welcome to my exhibition called Inside New York. I'm so happy that you guys can make it. It's not often that I get a chance to talk about my work, but with the given circumstances of everyone being indoors, I figured I could take this time to share one of my collections with you all. My, my sister, Stephanie, will be hosting a Q&A after the gallery walk, so please hold on to your questions to the very end. This show features 30 works that come from a period in my life where I was just finishing college and finalizing my subject matter. My inspiration comes from venturing out into the city Day. and taking in the iconic buildings, meaningful landmarks, and classic city moments. Um, so Scotty's gonna kick us off here and we're gonna be starting with what's one of my favorite pieces. Um, I believe this is 96 in Central Park. Is that right, Scott? Yeah, it is. This is 96 in Central Park. And this first piece here is the epitome of a classic city moment. How many times have you missed breakfast and grabbed a quick bagel or coffee from a street vendor before work? I know I have plenty of times. We know street vendors are the pulse of the city. Rain or shine, they provide us, busy New Yorkers, a quick convenience at a, re as a, re at a reasonable price. Their presence is an assurance of a city that provides everything that, a res that the residents need, even if that means a quick bite before hopping on the train. I love it, Scott. Thank you so much. Um, and we're transitioning to another piece um, that is really nostalgic for me growing up uh, on the Upper West Side and going to the Park and Riverside. Is this like 106 or 116th Street in Riverside? Uh, that's actually 116th Street um, across the street from Riverside Park. And this painting illustrates the high rise condominiums across the street from Riverside Park. I would like to show you guys the other painting. And this painting unveils the heart of New York City, Times Square. This is the city's cultural hub, which is full of theaters, music halls, and upscale hotels. Now let's take a moment to appreciate this, this city's ambiance of crowds, street traffic, and the beautiful colors this work has to offer. Thank you, Scott. I think with this moment with um, the Rona and the shutdown and seeing the vibrance of New York uh, captured is, is really powerful. Um, and uh, this piece is, is really an interesting piece as well. Um, what can you tell us about this piece? Well, for this last piece, um, the topic is beauty and chaos. So that's what brings me to this piece. And it's a part of a trio of works. We all know that the New York has its bad moments too. This last work addresses how a mixture of mental health issues and poor upbringings can result in someone taking an innocent life. It pays homage to a man who was stabbed and killed on the corner of 95th and Broadway. The innocent bystander appears dashing in disbelief, running away from the thought of someone losing their life right on the very street they stand on. And Scott, before we move off of this piece, I think, you know, I've, I've watched you paint this, I've seen you do this piece, and I, I just want to take a second to just stay here because I had never noticed the, um, what is that caution tape that's around it and it, that looks like blood splatter. And I've seen this painting a lot of times. Were you actually there when this happened or? Yeah, well, actually I was just hopping off the train coming from work and this happened a half hour after I got home. So that's why the caution tape that's here in the foreground. And there's also some blood splatters on the floor. Okay, so um, thank you, Scott. I, I know that's, that was probably a difficult moment and to, to share it through your paintings. Um, so we're gonna move on to the next um, section of Scotty's art pieces inside New York. Um, I think these are really interesting because uh, many of us on the call are from New York and grown up in New York. And I think one of the things that maybe tourists and others miss 
is the ability to look up, right? Like, you know, there's all these tall, amazing buildings, um, but when you really look up, uh, the architecture is really beautiful and special. Um, so Scott, anything you wanna share about this, this work with us? All right, so here we have a set of four paintings with similar compositions. And the Upper West Side is, I believe, is the home to the most beautiful pre-war buildings in New York. These buildings are known for their spaciousness, hardwood flooring, detailing, and in some cases, fireplaces. Quite often, they are luxury rentals or co-op apartments. These work of arts highlight the historic buildings and iconic water towers that dot the city's skyline. Right, Scott, this contrast you have, there was, it was darker on that painting and sort of lighter on this painting. Can you tell us anything about the technique that you used for this painting? Well, I've actually painted this, this painting on the spot. So it's, it was an observation of the street corner on 102nd and Broadway. And it's beautiful. What, what's some of the, this tree, what's some of that composition? Is there anything you can tell us? about the way that you painted this? So it was out in the street that you were painting? Yeah, so if you take a look at the tree, you see it has some more texture. And I, I painted that particular spot with a palette knife. So that's why it gives the surface texture a little bit um, more a feeling to it. That's, that's awesome. Thank you, Scotty. And I know we're gonna transition to um, another part of our gallery where you're going to share some of how you would describe some of the, the hot spots um, and areas uh, in our city. Um, so I'm super excited for you to share, um, I think, other areas that are really nostalgic to me having grown up um, on the Upper West Side. Um, so we're going to start with this um, painting, The Captures Christmas. Got anything you can share with us about this painting? Yeah, so... <clears throat> Every winter, tree loggers come from around the country to come to New York City to sell their finest Christmas trees. This center, this center painting captures the holiday season at its peak. Every Christmas tree they sell brings joy, excitement, and tradition to a family. Also, to the left, Also to the left, you see an, impression, an impressionism of a dice game. This painting was also created with a palette knife. So you can tell that there is some texture on the surface of the painting. I love it. Um, and I know there's another piece uh, that represents a snapshot of New York's 42nd Street, but from a different angle or Times Square area, what's different about this piece and what's similar? Yeah, so if you are visiting New York, you may know that there, the best time to go out is at night. That's, why, that, that's what this painting is all about. New York City nightlife scene is unforgettable. Just try, to, just try looking up at night in Times Square and, um, and almost every building is lit up with advertisements. Together, these paintings represent the diversity of neighborhoods inside New York. Awesome, so I know you're gonna take us over to the next section of the gallery. And I know you like to skip over this painting, Scott, but I'd love for you to stop at this one. Um, so I'd love to hear a little bit, I'm gonna tease you. Um, so I know when you first started doing cityscapes, one of the first cityscapes you did was of 103rd and Central Park West. Um, and this is when I told you that my favorite of all your paintings are cityscapes. Um, there's so many vibrant colors um, and there's, there's something different about this painting um, and very special for me who, who grew up uh, in this area. Um, can you tell us a little bit about what makes this painting different and special? So this is a cityscape of 103rd Street and Central Park West. And if you take a look at the work, you can see that it, it's, a, it's not your ordinary type of painting. Well, that's because of the curvilinear perspective that it's made in. Also, if you look at the lower left-hand corner, 
you can see a group of three kids. So that's actually an example of some kids in the community coming from some baseball practice. And also the, the buildings are created with the tropical color scheme. So that kind of sheds light to when this painting was created. So the title was called Afternoon New York. I love it. Thank you, Scott, for um, chatting about that one. I know it's one of my favorites. And this is also Times Square, but slightly different than some of the other compositions that you did. Yeah, this is a, a nocturnal painting of Times Square. So like I was saying earlier, um, Times Square is a big central hub of the theater district of New York's of New York City. So at this time is when the city comes alive. I love it. And this a nocturnal concept, this is also nocturnal, but slightly different. How is this one similar and different than the other? Yeah, this painting is also a nocturnal example. But if you see in the foreground, we, we have a small family and just an individual person that's walking around. And this is just like everyday life in, in New York, the busy, the hustle and bustle and the city traffic, probably around 6 p.m. I love it. Um, just, uh, I think you did all these paintings for someone like myself um, who grew up on the Upper West Side and uh, this street on Broadway and this theater, I think is iconic for not iconic in terms of historic, but just like a piece of the Upper West Side. Can you tell us a little bit about this painting? Yeah, if you're a moviegoer, and you live in the New York City area, then I'm sure you know about the AMC movie theaters. This 84th Street painting reminds me of growing up, walking <laughs> Upper West Side with my family and going to see some of my favorite movies. And what's the technique that you used here, Scotty? Well, for this painting, I actually took some reference photos of the neighborhood. And from there, I started to create my my sketch and composition of what I wanted to include in the works. So you can see uh, there's some kids walking in the, in, the, in the middle ground and in the foreground. So that's basically what I wanted to capture was the community um, inside the painting. I love it. So um, I know we're going to move on to the next section, um, which is actually the last section in the show. Um, and uh, this one, I think, is um, really powerful in terms of that space in New York that kind of moves us away from our concrete jungle um, and really captures uh, some of the beauty uh, that New York City also has to offer. Um, so if anything you want to share with us about this particular part of your collection? Yeah, so my last, my last wall of paintings shed light on a very special place to me inside New York. Central Park is a place I go to meditate and clear my mind from, busy in, from the busy inner city. The park's big open fields and trees free my mind. I'm, in, I'm also entertained by the joyous spirits of the ducks by Central Park, Pond. Hearing the, hearing the ducks quack is a memory that, I will, that will live with me for the rest of my life. If you walk further into the park, you, you will arrive at Bridge 28. This white bridge, the white bridge in this work is a symbol of communication and union between heaven and earth or two distant realms. It can be seen as a connection between nature and man. It may be the passage to reality or, or merely a symbol for travel and crossing. That's amazing. Scott, can you tell us a little bit about your inspiration for this piece? Well, if you take, if you take a look at the bridge, it's a lot lighter than everything that's around it. So this painting was inspired by the artist Rembrandt and his chiaroscuro style. So chiaroscuro means light to dark. So there's a, radi a radial shadow that, that resonates from the middle outwards. That's absolutely beautiful. Thank you, Scott. Um, and um, I know now you've highlighted some of your pieces. 
um, and we're going to move into our next section. But anything you want to share in terms of how folks can access the show and see some of the pieces themselves? And I know we didn't get to all the pieces. Yeah. So I've highlighted only a few of my favorite works here today, but the full exhibition will be available on my website, scottbenitez.com, from today through Thursday, May 21st. You can visit the site, take a self-guided tour, and spend more time there with each, with each of my pieces. I love it. Thank you, Scott. And um, now we're going to turn it over to Q&A. I know so many of us our family and we have loved and supported Scotty and his journey as an artist. Um, but uh, seeing this collection of work, not just the individual pieces, I think is really powerful. Um, so I'm going to kick it off with one question, but I'm going to challenge you all. Um, this is an opportunity for you to ask questions for Scott. Um, and my first question for Scott is, you know, you just graduated with your fine arts degree. Where did this come from? <laughs> what, how did you start painting and doing art? What inspired you? Well, it all started when I was in high school. I was basically one of the best artists in my class and my high school, and I stood out in my art class. So the administration of the school asked me to create their uh, yearbook cover and also like the t-shirts. And from there, I just, I fell in love with the craft and I participated in the after school program at the MoMA. And at the MoMA is where I met my, where I, where I met my mentors and they basically helped me create a portfolio um, to get into the best art schools. That's awesome. So now I'm gonna um, unmute you all because you have been muted this whole time. Um, if you have uh, dogs or, uh, <laughs> anything loud in the background, you shall be uh, muted again. Um, but uh, Scott, anything you want to share in terms of um, your, your family? Oh, yeah. yeah, guys. Hello. I'm happy that you all, that you guys are all here. And I'd love for you guys to give me some uh, feedback on what you thought about the show. I thought it was amazing, Scott. Thanks. Thanks, Anthony. I mean, I've seen you do it. I've been, I've been walked by in the street and seen you do it. So, you know, yeah. from from going from selling art on uh, 96 in uh, Columbus to now <laughs> actually having your first exhibit, pretty dope, bro. Like, yeah. It's, it's definitely yeah. different. Great setup, Scott. Stephanie, too. Great setup all around and support. I love it. I love the fact that one of the uh, shots in uh, one of the paintings from Central Park. I think we actually uh, met you there while you were painting it. So that just makes it so much more real for us and a lot more valuable. You know, it's like a great moment that was captured there. I think I showed up like halfway through your painting or so, just say hi and yeah, seeing it here just makes it that much more valuable. It's awesome all around. Yeah, hi, I agree. I really loved all your pieces especially like showing the duality of new york both in like central park and like on the streets so you could see like duality between like man and also like duality and like nature and humanity so like that that was like super super cool i have a question um is this the only kind of subject matter that you're interested in painting, which is cityscapes, or are there other things that you're interested in painting? Well, right now I have a collection of uh, around 40 plus uh, cityscapes, but I'm thinking about creating some seascapes inspired by my trip to the Bahamas. So I'm actually in the process of creating those paintings right now. So. Who influenced you? So that's a really good question. Um, so as far as my, my, the artists that influenced me, I, I'm influenced by Rembrandt, like I said earlier, uh, Edward Hopper, and a lot of the old masters too. Okay. So Scott, I think I'm really proud of you. I still have that drawing 
that you did for me when you came to visit me in Stony Brook. And then I have on one of my frames and it's they're saved in like protective plastic. <laughs> I, what I love about it is that you use different mediums and that's that's really rare because they usually artists usually use like one or two and you use a lot. So I'm proud of you. Thank you, thank you. So are there any other questions or anything anyone else wants to share? Someone might be stuck on mute also. I'm gonna just unmute any, everyone just in case they wanna jump in. I have a question. Uh, during quarantine, is there anything painting during the past like seven weeks or how has this time maybe influenced anything you've been doing recently or maybe going into now? Is that changing or providing other input towards what you may be working on? Well, well, with the time that I, that I took off from quarantine, I've actually been putting, we actually put together this show with that time from the quarantine. And just basically looking at my collection uh, more closely. Scotty, I've also seen you like painting more than you would normally have an opportunity to paint, right? So right. like you've had a chance to, to pause in yeah. maybe a way that you haven't normally been able to pause. Yeah. It's also weird because you're outside of New York. Like, so I think that's also, is that like a different feeling in terms of your art? Yeah, I'm, I lo I'm looking at my paintings more as a, a, med a meditative uh, perspective. And it just takes you to a place uh, of happiness and you know yeah in the middle of a lot of chaos <laughs> exactly yeah that that makes a lot of sense um and i think one thing that we want to make sure everyone knows is that this gallery is going to be embedded on scott's website which is what's our website scott benitez.com yeah, you guys can see um, this gallery. Up for, it's up for two weeks on scottbenitez.com on the home page. Yeah, and it'll be up through May 21st, and uh, people can take self-guided tours. There are actually um, about 30 pieces, and Scotty uh, gave tours of about 15 to 20. So there's quite a few other pieces um, that you can kind of see from this preview that are, are pretty gorgeous as well. Um, so um, as we wrap, I think, um, I, obviously, on behalf of Scott, thank you for joining. Um, please share the gallery with your friends. I think these pieces, we all probably agree, are gorgeous. Um, feel free if you feel like shopping in this time. <laughs> I know that the, the, these pieces are available on the site. And I like I own some of Scotty's pieces, so like you can see the piece behind me. But seeing them on these walls makes them look even more gorgeous, and I feel like there's some prints that I might want to pick up again. So um, thank you. Scott, any closing words you want to say? Yeah, guys. So I just, I loved your, your feedback and it just send me your thoughts. If you, if you would like to say anything more and share my link with your friends and your family. And I would just like to say thank you guys again. Uh, sincere. <laughs> and stay safe. Hey folks, I have a question if uh, there's still... Let's go. <laughs> First of all, uh, this idea of the gallery is uh, excellent. I, I really like it and, and I didn't expect it. And uh, yeah, you guys put me on the spot. I don't, wasn't expecting to be on camera today. <laughs> but uh, hey, Scott, um, I, I started following you on Instagram and I saw you doing some abstract work. I, I think it's abstract work. Like you were like doing other type of work in right. some videos. Um, when can we expect to see some of that and um, available to for? for um, well, the, the the abstract work I have also available under a different tab on my website. All you have to do is go to the catalog and then click abstract artworks. But as far as creating um, new abstract paintings, they're they're still gonna be in the process. So I'm still in the process of, make, of making new abstract work, but it's going to be a while. <laughs> OK, no, that's fine. I, I was just uh, curious about that. I was recently at the San Francisco Museum of Art, and 
I had some experiences that I wasn't expecting with abstract work. Like it, it just created some reactions in me that I wasn't expecting. And I was like, oh, uh, hmm, I'm God curious. Has, He's, yeah, God has yeah, a of abstract pieces that I've been trying to acquire that he's not letting go. Um, <laughs> so I think uh, forming a collection of some of those abstract pieces, I, I think will definitely be off in spot. Yeah. All right. And um, uh, last time I checked out your website, there were options for um, different types of like prints of your previous work. Is this gallery also going to be like that or is it just the originals? Yeah, so if you guys, you guys can go into the gallery on your own time, but if you walk up to any painting that you like, all you have to do is click on the image and it actually gives you some more detail. Like on the bottom you see here, and it gives you a link to directly to where you guys can, can, can acquire you your own it, print. Can you click on it? Can you feel it? So yeah. Nice. Yeah. So yeah. It's got this is something I discovered um since you we we've spent some time together in the past few weeks. I thought that when you were ordering your paintings and we were ordering reprints that we were getting like posters of the paintings. Yeah. Can you talk through the different options that we have if we're gonna purchase some of your pieces? Well, all the all the paintings that you've seen uh at my show. You can you can acquire those paintings and they're high quality G clay prints. So they're exactly they'll look exactly like the original paintings. And, and on it, canvas. On right? canvas. On, on canvas. canvas. Yeah. And mounted on canvas. Mounted on canvas. Yeah. So there's a couple of different and they get shipped directly to them, right? Exactly. Are there some originals of any of these pieces? Do you still have some of are any originals available still? Yeah, the originals are available on my Saatchi page. page. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you. All right. So I think that's all. If anyone else has any comments, if not, uh, you know where to find Scotty. Um, share his IG. What's your IG, Scotty? Yeah, guys. So I know you all are following me on IG, but feel free to uh, stay in contact with me on my IG at Scott dot Benitez. And share with your friends. <laughs> yeah, share with your friends and family or just comment on some new paintings I'll be posting in the uh, up and coming weeks. We just got a question uh, from a Miss Kay Diaz. She asked if you can ship to Puerto Rico. Do you ship to Puerto Rico? Yeah, we ship um, all around the world. Amazing. Awesome. What was that? I think one of your aunts is talking. Oh, Thank you so I, much, oh, Scott. I'm going to order one. That's cow. Oh, cool. Yeah, that'd be great. I just shipped a painting to Kuwait. Oh, fabulous. I'm going to um, surprise my mom with one and send it to her house in Puerto Rico. Cool. Amazing. Awesome. And Scott, what if I have like a favorite street that I would want painted? Like, are we able to commission a particular street? Like, let's say for me, like 102nd and Columbus. Um, is it possible to commission you to paint that or we're in DC, um, can I commission you to like paint the capital? What, what is that process like? Yeah, I also take commissions. So all, if you would like to inquire about one, you can reach out to me on my contact us link on my website or through my Instagram private, private messages or DM. Awesomeness. Um, so uh, thank you all for joining. Thank you, Scotty, for sharing your talent. I feel like we can go through the show in 40, 45 minutes, but I know you spent hours and hours and hours on every one of these pieces. Um, so I think I speak on behalf of so many of our friends and family that are on this call. Your talent is amazing. And thank you for sharing it with all of us. Thank you, guys. Bye. Thank you.